Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. The summer travel season is on and people who have fought off the travel bug for the past two years are ready to get out and explore. But no matter how well traveled you are, I bet your passport is not as full as celebrated traveler and photographer Jessica Nabanco. She is the first black woman on record to visit every country in the world. And she's out with her new book, The Catch Me If You Can. Can. Hi, Jessica. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for thank you for sitting still long enough to do this interview with us. So listen, mm -hmm. you visited all 195 UN recognized countries, but you just chose 100 for the book. Tell us how you selected mm -hmm. the countries that you've included. Yeah, I was really intentional about the stories that I wanted to tell. Um, you know, I really wanted to tell stories about countries that people don't typically think of traveling to, uh, a lot of countries that many people probably don't remember from their elementary school geography classes. Um, and I also was really intentional about the images. So working with National Geographic was a dream. And when I told them I wanted to use my images as well, they were open to it. So being able to show beautiful images from places like Yemen and Somalia, um, I thought was incredibly important for this project. These images are beautiful. They're breathtaking. Why did you want to set this record? Um, so it was less about setting a record and it was more about getting to every country in the world for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I am a geography nerd and I've been traveling internationally since I was four. So even before the advent of social media, I'd been to over 30 countries. Um, I started my blog, thecatchmeifyoucan.com, back in 2009, and since my early 20s, it was my goal to get to every country. And um, in 2017, I just set the goal of um, doing it by my 35th birthday. Mm -hmm. And you met that goal? Well, I overshot it by five months, okay. but I was still 35 <laughs> when I finished. <laughs> Close enough. So what lessons have you learned from uh, your travels around the world? Yeah, I think the biggest lesson for me is that most people are good. You know, I've traveled solo to 89 countries and that would not be possible without the kindness of strangers. And it really is that kindness of those strangers that made my journey so beautiful. And that's really what I hope to convey and what I do convey in the book. I really hope people read this book and it really makes them think differently about the world. I think a lot of us have um, fear around traveling abroad. And I hope that the stories of humanity and kindness in the book um, sort of help people to remove that fear from their lives. I, I have to tell you, I, I envy your ability to travel around the world. I think if, you know, if I didn't have uh, bills and responsibilities, I would jump on a plane and do the same thing. It's a very unconventional life. It sounds very exciting, um, but it, of course it wasn't always easy. And explain some of the challenges that you faced while traveling around the world as a black woman. Um, I wouldn't say there were specific challenges as a, like, I think, you know, the experience of being black is in a monolith. For me, my challenges came around specifically being visibly African. So I had a lot of issues with immigration, um, even in the U.S. You know, one time I was reentering the U.S. and I was asked for another form of ID beyond my passport because they didn't believe it was me and my passport. Um, so most of those issues are very specifically related to being African mm -hmm. uh, because I also travel on a Ugandan passport. So if I'm entering on an American passport, sometimes they think my U.S. passport is fake. If I'm entering on a Ugandan passport, they would think that I was trying to overstay my visa. Um, but beyond that, you know, I just had such an amazing time. I would say only 1% of my travels did I have any hiccups or annoyances. Mm -hmm. And that really comes through in the book. You know, I traveled to Russia solo. I traveled to many countries in the Middle East solo, and I had an absolutely amazing time. So even me as a black woman, um, I don't really, I didn't feel any hindrance to traveling because I was a black woman. And I, and I really hope that, um, Black women read this book and get excited and feel more free to travel, um, and everyone in general. And you've had some um, remarkable experiences as you've traveled. You kissed a giraffe in Kenya, swam mm -hmm. with the whales in Tonga. Uh, tell us about one of the moments that really made a significant impact on you. 
Yeah, um, you know, swimming with whales in Tonga was pretty incredible. Um, when I obviously it's a huge logistical project to visit every country in the world. And so you don't always get to select when you're traveling. It just has to make sense, especially where there's limited flights. But I ended up going to Tonga during the time period where you could swim with humpback whales. And I remember the first day we went out, it was a bunch of hurry up and wait, and we couldn't find the whales. And then the next day we went out and we did. And I was so nervous getting into the water. But once I got in and I was able to relax and you get to engage with these beautiful animals and it's like, they're almost playing with you. They're definitely aware that you're there and they're spending time with you. And it was just such a beautiful experience because, you know, for me, every time I'm underwater, I realize how small I am. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking into the vastness of the ocean um, from below and you realize we're so tiny, especially mm -hmm. compared to a humpback whale. Mm -hmm. So it was really an incredible experience. And you also visited Uganda, where your, your parents are from? Yeah, so I've been going to Uganda since I was very young. Uh -huh. um, so I'm very connected. I go pretty regularly. And like I said, I also have my passport. So I'm very connected to Uganda. Um, and I know in Boston, there's a huge community in Watham. <laughs> all right, shout out to the Ugandan community here. Yes. Um, you know, we touched on this before. You know, um, some people probably think it takes a lot of courage to travel on your own to countries where a different language is spoken and the culture is unfamiliar. You know, where did you find the drive to overcome that fear of the unknown? Maybe you didn't even have that fear. <laughs> I think if I had it, uh, it went away at a pretty early age. Because, you know, the thing is, I, I grew up in um, Detroit. It's a pretty diverse area. My parents, you know, I grew up around my parents' friends who are Indian and Filipino and Congolese and um, Kenyan. And so I've always been exposed to other people. I went to elementary school with um, people from the Middle East. So for me, I never really had a built in fear of strangers. And I think because my parents didn't talk about othering places like that as a child, I never othered them in my head. So we traveled and when we traveled, things were different. They weren't the same as where we were, but it was never a value judgment of this is better or this is worse. Mm -hmm. And I think in particular, travel, because I traveled to Uganda so much as a child, um, and my mom's side of the family is from a village. So I would go to the village and it wasn't like, oh my God, these poor people are living in a mm -hmm. village with no running water or electricity. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, we're going home yeah. and yeah. I'm going to hang out with my cousins in the village. So there was no value judgment there. So I think just the way my parents raised me, um, I never had that fear instilled because there was no, there wasn't really that fear of strangers that was built into me as a child. Now, foreign travel, not always affordable. Explain how you paid for all of these fabulous adventures. Yeah, so I was working. <laughs> Um, I was running my own company at that time called Jet Black. It was a luxury travel agency. And um, yeah, beyond that, as my social following began to grow, I reached out to brands so hotels would give me free stays in exchange for social posts and the same with like tour companies. I also use credit cards with travel rewards points uh, for everyday purchases, which is great. So you're using it for groceries and gas and everything. And it adds up to free travel. Um, and then when I did run out of money, my community supported me and I was able to raise money via GoFundMe, which was simply incredible. That's incredible. incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for being here to tell us about your travels around the world. The book is called The Catch Me If You Can. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Life lessons learned from across the globe. Next on City Line, breaking cultural boundaries while sharing personal stories. The route to understanding societies share that more similarities than differences. <laughs>